In this video tutorial, I will overview the Baylis-Hillman reaction. This reaction is an efficient carbon-carbon bond forming reaction that produces multifunctional compounds. The reaction mechanism and a few synthetic applications of this reaction will also be covered. This synthetic transformation was first reported in 1968 by a Japanese chemist named Kenichi Morita. In the first reported example, a tertiary phosphine was used as a catalyst. In 1972, a related reaction was performed by a British chemist, Anthony Baylis, and a German chemist, Melville Hillman. They used a tertiary amine as a catalyst in the reaction. The reaction later came to be known as the Baylis-Hillman reaction and it is also known as the Morita-Baylis-Hillman reaction. This reaction was not further explored much until 1980. Since this time, the development of this reaction has increased dramatically as evidenced from the literature of the past three decades. The Baylis-Hillman reaction involves two different reactants plus a catalyst. One of the reactants must be an activated alkene. The other reactant must be an electrophile. The catalyst is shown above the reaction arrow. The Baylis-Hillman product, in this case an adduct, is shown on the right. Thus, the Baylis-Hillman reaction can be defined as the reaction that results in the formation of a new carbon-carbon bond between the alpha position of the activated alkene and the electrophilic carbon of the electrophile to yield a multifunctional Baylis-Hillman adduct. What is an adduct? An adduct is a product found by the direct combination of two separate reactants, in this case an activated alkene and an electrophile, in such a way that there is change in connectivity between the atoms, yet there is no loss of atoms from the reactants. Now, coming back to the Baylis-Hillman reaction. As can be seen, a variety of alpha-beta unsaturated compounds can serve as the activated alkene. Various prochiral substrates can serve as the electrophile. And either phosphines or tertiary amines can be used as catalysts to speed up the process. The Baylis-Hillman reaction has all the features needed to be considered as an efficient carbon-carbon bond forming reaction. An efficient reaction must be carried out under mild reaction conditions. Indeed, the Baylis-Hillman reaction can be carried out under mild reaction conditions. An efficient reaction must be atom economical. In a Baylis-Hillman reaction, the number of atoms on the reactant side is equal to the number of atoms on the product side. Hence, it is atom economical. An efficient reaction must be selective. The Baylis-Hillman reaction is chemoselective, regioselective and stereoselective as will soon become evident when we discuss the various kinds of Baylis-Hillman reactions. In addition, the Baylis-Hillman reaction produces synthetically useful molecules. At this juncture, let us discuss more about the synthetically useful molecules produced by Baylis-Hillman reaction. The Baylis-Hillman reaction is a two-component reaction which can open a doorway to multitude of functionally diverse products. The Baylis-Hillman reaction produces chiral molecules. Thus, asymmetric versions of this reaction are possible as will be shown. If the two components, that is, the activated alkene and the electrophile are present in appropriate positions within a molecule, an intramolecular Baylis-Hillman reaction is a possibility, which in turn leads to useful carbocyclic and heterocyclic molecules. The Baylis-Hillman reaction yields multifunctional molecules which have a wide range of synthetic applications. The Baylis-Hillman reaction is a two-component reaction, so by using different activated alkenes and electrophiles a multitude of functionally diverse products like esters, nitriles, ketones, phosphonates, sulfonates, sulfones, aldehydes and allenic compounds can be generated. The Baylis-Hillman reaction yields chiral molecules, hence the asymmetric Baylis-Hillman reaction stereoselectively generates various chiral products. Before going into the aspects of asymmetric Baylis-Hillman reaction, let's briefly review some aspects of asymmetric synthesis. Asymmetric synthesis is also known as enantioselective synthesis. In asymmetric synthesis, a substrate with a prochiral center is converted to a product with a chiral center. 
For example, the shown asymmetric hydrogenation reaction selectively results in one of two different chiral molecules which are mirror images of each other from the same achiral substrate in the presence of a chiral catalyst. Now let's examine a few of many asymmetric Baylis-Hillman reactions that have been reported in the literature. In the first example of asymmetric Baylis-Hillman reaction, a chiral alkene and a chiral electrophile all in the presence of an organocatalyst yielded product with high diastereoselectivity. Second one is the asymmetric Baylis-Hillman reaction involving a chiral electrophile yielding a product with high diastereoselectivity. In the next reaction, an alkyne was first activated by a copper reagent which upon reacting with chiral electrophile results in a single diastereomer. Third one is the asymmetric Baylis-Hillman reaction involving a chiral catalyst yielding a product with moderate enantioselectivity. selectivity. As mentioned earlier, an intramolecular Baylis-Hillman reaction produces various synthetically useful carbocycles and heterocycles. The first example shows an intramolecular Baylis-Hillman reaction producing a six-membered carbocycle in 85% yield. The second example shows an intramolecular Baylis-Hillman reaction producing a five-membered heterocycle in 62% yield. The Baylis-Hillman adduct is a multifunctional compound. Such multifunctional products have found use as key intermediates in various syntheses. For example, Baylis-Hillman adducts have been employed in the synthesis of gamma-butyrolactones, delta-lactones, indolizines, beta-hydroxy-alpha-methyl-ketones, beta-lactams, pyrrolidinones, epoxides, and various alpha-beta unsaturated compounds. These are just a few of many synthetic applications of Baylis-Hillman adducts. Baylis-Hillman adducts are also found as intermediates in the synthesis of various natural products such as cerebutin, which plays an important role in the biosynthesis of syringolide elicitors. Pentinomycin, which exhibits antimicrobial properties and can serve as antibiotics. Chloramphenicol derivatives, which are potential neuroleptics, antibacterials and antibiotics. We have so far discussed the importance of Baylis-Hillman adduct. Let us now briefly discuss the mechanistic aspects of Baylis-Hillman reaction. Apart from the product, which is Baylis-Hillman adduct, there are two common byproducts observed in Baylis-Hillman reaction, and they are Michael-type dimer and dioxanone. We will discuss the mechanisms in detail for all the observed products and the byproducts. Firstly, let us discuss the mechanism leading to the Baylis-Hillman adduct. Michael-type nucleophilic addition of the catalyst to the activated alkene generates Zwitterion A, followed by nucleophilic addition of A onto the electrophile generates Zwitterion B. Next, proton transfer generates an enolate C. Finally, release of the catalyst leads to Baylis-Hillman adduct. In this mechanism, conversion of intermediate A to intermediate B is considered rate-limiting step and the reaction follows the third-order kinetics. When the concentration of the catalyst is kept constant, then the reaction follows pseudo-second-order kinetics. Next, let us discuss the mechanism leading to byproduct 1, the Michael-type dimer. Michael-type nucleophilic addition of the catalyst to the activated alkene generates Zwitterion A, followed by nucleophilic addition of A onto another molecule of activated alkene generates Zwitterion D. Next, proton transfer generates a Zwitterion containing an enol and an enolate. Finally, release of the catalyst and tautomerization of enol generates Michael-type dimer. Now, Coming to the mechanism leading to the byproduct 2, that is the dioxanone. Michael type nucleophilic addition provides zwitterionic enolate A. Nucleophilic addition onto aldehyde provides zwitterion B. Nucleophilic addition onto second equivalent of aldehyde yields conjugate base of hemiacetal C. C undergoes rate limiting deprotonation to provide hemiacetal D. Elimination of catalyst provides E. In an alternate route to Baylis-Hillman adduct, 
elimination of benzaldehyde from E provides F. Alternatively, E can undergo cyclization via elimination of methanol to provide the byproduct dioxanone G. Like many other reactions, bayless hillman reaction has a drawback. Initial bayless hillman reaction was very slow when carried out at room temperature and atmospheric pressure, usually taking a few days to a few weeks for the completion of reaction. In the recent past, progress has been made in speeding up the process. By using activated alkenes and electrophiles, reactions were able to go to completion in few days. Hydrogen bonding interactions between the substrates has led to the reduction of reaction time. Use of high pressure. The reaction time was brought down to a few minutes from a few days by increasing the pressure from a 1 atmosphere to 5 kilobar. Use of microwave irradiation. At room temperature, there was no reaction. But under microwave irradiation, reaction was completed in 25 minutes. In conclusion, bayless hillman reaction is an efficient carbon-carbon bond forming reaction that produces synthetically useful multifunctional molecules. References have been provided for all the reactions that have been discussed in this tutorial. This tutorial is an MF Mayer group production. This work is supported by the National Science Foundation.